It was not your fault. It's not your fault. It was never your fault. It's not anything that you have done. No means no. If you don't want to do that, you don't do that. So many, nearly every single woman that I know that I've spoke to about these things, similar, if not exactly the same things have happened to them. Friends all have stories, and I've got stories about people trying to touch you up on the train. I kept saying, no, no, I, I, I don't want to. Then he got really forceful. Oh, well, boys will be boys, but then those boys grow up to be men. It is a problem, so it's time to do something. on this particular street? Um, personally, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't want to walk through here on my own at night at all. I don't feel safe, and if I'm surrounded by men, I don't feel safe either. I never really feel safe, to be honest. I would really get paranoid. I've tried to get into a place where I stop worrying about something that might not be. I drive everywhere because I won't, because of how unsafe I feel. Anywhere. <laughs> even, not even in nighttime, I mean in daytime still, like, I don't feel safe. So before I transitioned, um, truthfully, I never felt safe. There's not one time that I don't feel unsafe when I'm completely alone, because I'm always looking over my shoulder. Like, I'm literally always looking over my shoulder. So I always watch my back. I feel unsafe every night. I feel I'm more unsafe in more built-up areas. I don't know if it's because there's like more people everywhere in London feels like there could be a corner where you don't know what's down there. I wouldn't even walk down the street. I would follow the main road so that worst case scenario, I could wave to someone for help. I think it's really sad that for me to feel safe at night time, it took transitioning. It took the world viewing me and socializing with me as a man for, to be left alone. I don't really talk about this stuff very often, I think. I didn't want people to put that on the reason why I transitioned. I would definitely feel unsafe here. If I was on my own and I'm walking home, then I've definitely got my keys. I make sure I always have my keys. I keep my hand on my car keys. I carry my keys in my hand. If I have keys in my pocket, I just usually hold on to them <laughs> like they're a weapon. But I guess I'll be, I might be targeted, you know. Some people might see it as something else. My brother, when I was younger, taught me ways to hurt someone that was stronger than me. I tried to search one of them electric guns, um, but I can't, I don't know if I'm legal to hold it. I will always make sure I'm on the phone to a loved one. I'm thinking, where's my phone? Yeah, I talk on the phone, which some people would not agree with. Some people say you shouldn't have your phone out because you could get mugged. Someone actually tried to mug me because I had my phone. I tend to walk as much like a man as I can. I'll try and walk as masculine as possible so that people don't think I'm a woman. Yeah, try and get my clothes super loose so I look like a man. You learn as you go, there isn't a rule book. I don't take night buses if it's too late. I think I tend to like get taxis instead, like I'll get in a cab. I'll screenshot my Uber details to my husband. If I can't take my car there, if I can't do that, then I probably just won't go. I'll walk quite fast. Walk fast. Yeah, I walk extremely fast. And listen to music too. I try and keep like really happy. <laughs> I don't know why it makes me feel better. I cannot live in fear all the time. It's so mad, isn't it? It's happened so many times that now it just feels like I don't have an answer to that. I feel like the harassment feels like that's normal. It's not a nice feeling when it's unwanted attention just because you're going to the shop or walking to the car or going to meet your mate. And some people are like, you should, oh, you should be happy about it. People are complimenting you. Like, I don't take that as a compliment because it just makes me feel uncomfortable. I might be walking on one side of the road and people would purposely cross over and try and interact with me and then if I didn't stop because I'm going to work or not interested then all of a sudden I'll be shouted at and I'm rude and I think I'm too nice. Sometimes when I go to sessions now I won't wear makeup and I'll wear a baggy hoodie and I, I won't make a big deal out of how I appear out of fear of the guy that's doing the session because normally it is a guy thinking that he may be able to make a move and that's in the workplace um, so it's, it's everywhere even on my way to work. <laughs> I don't mean to offend you in any way. I just want to ask you a simple question. I was told that there's a couple of uh, 
You know when something happens so so frequently and from such an early age that you, it's really hard to pinpoint at what point I was like first sexually harassed. I would say I was pretty young. I feel like I was really young. Now it's become so common, like anytime you go out you're going to have to deal with these stairs. I kind of thought, oh, men, that's just kind of what they do and that's really part of the problem. I remember the first time I was sexually harassed, I was in school and the boys at the back pinged my bra strap and were just pinging it and they were just talking about my boobs, you know? And what was that? Ten. That's the age my daughter is now. Guy comes over, arm around, then moves his hand to your bum and you're just like, okay. And a guy came up behind me and smacked my arse full force. Um, and I actually turned around and decked him just out of reflex, which in hindsight might not have been the best thing. You never know how strong someone's going to be. You don't know how they're going to, what they're going to pull out, how they're going to react, how you're going to react. And I just burst into tears in the middle of the dance floor. I didn't go to clubs anymore. Like, even now, I don't like going to clubs. I don't want to risk anyone touching me. I, I don't know how... Um, talk about it, I don't want to talk about it, I don't know how... My boss at the time, you know, was very inappropriate. The minute I wear a dress, you know, I get felt up and, you know, assaulted. So I, I blamed myself. I was like, well, maybe if I wasn't wearing a dress or, you know, then I wouldn't have gotten that kind of attention. But um, I just need to remember that it's actually not my fault. That's how I lost my virginity. Um, obviously, it's very hard to to even think back about it. That experience changed me as a person in a good way, also in a bad way. I mean, bad way is obvious. Um, that gave me a lot. Um, it traumatized me and it really affected my relationship with men. I mean, in a good way, I gained a lot knowledge, information and understanding. If I have a kid, um, I would tell them um, to make sure it's not gonna happen. Just an example, I was seeing someone and I wasn't really ready to go there yet sexually. Then he got really forceful. So I had to physically restrain him the best I could. The first experience of sexual assault that I can really remember is my mum. I was at high school, so I would have been about 11. And she'd been walking to work one morning through a park and she was pushed to the ground by this jogger. And luckily, you know, without going into too many details, like luckily before anything really serious happened, another woman came along and she shouted and the jogger was frightened off. And from that point, my mum then bought a rape alarm and was carrying that with her. And, you know, we were told about it. We were told, don't walk through that park at any time of the day, because this happened in the morning. It was daylight, it was summer, so it was light in the morning. And you were then told, you know, don't go there by yourself. You need to be with people if you're walking there. Like, just for example, I was 15 walking home from a train station and I was right by the school that I went to and down the back of um, our, like, sports hall there was, like, an alleyway that led you to, like, it was just, like, a, basically a cycle path. As I was walking through at 15 years old, someone jumped out and grabbed me, like, completely bear hugged me from behind, didn't know who it was, literally just jumped out and kind of tried to restrain me. The only thing that saved me was, like, I threw myself back and headbutted them didn't see their face, didn't see anything, just felt like a big black puffer jacket around me. That's the scariest moment for me because hadn't I have headbutted them and they'd have actually got me, what would have happened then? Um, I basically went out with this group of girls and my drink got spiked. Um, at the time I was already out as a lesbian so there was a group of guys that they were just around and I don't really know exactly how and what, why it all happened but my drink got spiked and it just was crazy because the girls that I was with was jealous because of the men who was interacting with me, even though I didn't fancy them and I didn't want them to be around me, they were getting jealous and at one point they all just left me. Like there's definitely points where I was like passed out on a table and people were like, those guys were taking pictures up my dress and just, I don't know, just being disgusting really. Other stuff I think that all my friends have really experienced is, you know, being on, being on the bus and somebody having their hand in their pocket and clearly touching themselves and getting excited at their leg brushing against my leg 
and I would move closer to the window, you know, ended up hun completely hunched up, just thinking, you know, get the fuck away from me. But at the time, I was probably about 14. You just embarrassed. You know, the first thought is embarrassment. You feel shocked. You, you don't know what to say. You've not been in that situation before. And, you know, sex and things like that, it's all an awkward thing to talk about. So the fact that somebody's doing that, a grown man, and you're, you're a teenager, you're confused. It doesn't matter how many times you try and avoid situations. It's just something as simple as just being on the underground at rush hour and just feeling something behind me and I'm like wait that definitely felt like a hand. Friends all have stories and I've got stories about people trying to touch you up on the train. I think you're overreacting or being paranoid and so you sort of wait it out but then you feel it again and you feel that what is very clearly fingers and a hand between your legs. And then the next minute he would pushed me up against the bus stop and he assaulted me. I was crying. There were so many people there. I remember it was the 297 bus from Ealing Broadway and no one helped me. I was in a family restaurant. It was a um, salsa bar. We were all um, dancing after uh, dinner and these men uh, just comes behind me and starts to dance with me. And he was rubbing his penis against me. Like he had literally his penis out. I was like 13 years old at the time. I can never say the word. I still can't say the word. But as I got into my early 20s and I, and I realized what had happened, I knew that I wanted to speak out. I knew that I wanted to speak to other women about what had happened. And I almost felt guilty because my experience wasn't walking late at night and being jumped or attacked. It wasn't, it wasn't, um, the stereotype of what you might think um, and so for a long time I beat myself up thinking like okay no, no maybe it maybe it wasn't that like maybe no you know you, you were fine you were there you weren't kicking you weren't screaming you were fine but the point was I didn't want that to happen so I kept saying no no I, I, I don't want to I don't want to I, I don't feel comfortable I, no and he just kept pushing and he kept pushing and he kept pushing and he kept pushing and then eventually at some point I the words okay um, came out of my mouth and I know I'm, I was I was not okay I tried telling my friends what I felt like had happened at the time and I, I lost all my friends because it's like well what do you want to believe do you want to believe that a guy that you go to school with that they're a rapist or do you want to believe that this girl's just an attention-seeking whore, so that's what I was. Everyone's got a story, and I was kind of shocked to realise the levels and the volume of how much it impacts everyone at some point in their life. It's almost like a statistic, as if it's just a given. It is quite highly likely it's going to happen to you, which is really disturbing. So many, nearly every single woman that I know that I've spoke to about these things, similar if not exactly the same things have happened to them and I don't understand how I don't understand how it is just so common. I went to an all-girls school and they came to the school specifically to talk to us about self-defense and what you do if you're in a position that's you know a bit dangerous and you're not really you're scared and they talked about the keys as being something that you could do hold the keys between your hands and I do remember thinking at the time well why why should I have to hold the keys between my hands. Shouldn't you be telling people to not hurt girls? It's not protect your daughters, it's educate your son. I know I have my older brother, he's five years older than me and he's never been taught about consent. Instead it's been me and my sister who have always been told uh, don't go out, don't do this and stuff. So you can really understand that the whole problem is because we're being threatened by people who just have never been educated on notions of respect, on consent. Uh, so it's only, it only goes one way and they just think that it's a game for them. Pornography is a massive thing, like how does that represent the dynamic of a man and a woman, you know? It seems like, you know, schools, these young boys, they're watching pornographic content, they've got access over the internet to whatever, and they don't seem to be educated about respect for women. And I don't know whether that's coming from lack of respect from, you know, what their families are teaching them, or whether it needs to be something that happens at the schools, but there is an education job that needs to be done. There's a lot of covering up, there's a lot of, oh, well, boys will be boys, but then those boys grow up to be men, and it's like, when are you going to teach them the lesson or when are you going to teach them the boundaries of what's 
what is consent or what's acceptable, what isn't acceptable. It comes down to the way things are advertised. It comes down to the way the gender pay gap is still a thing. It's embedded in absolutely every single part of society. And the government needs to play a really big role in this to show that they respect women and they're taking this seriously because it doesn't seem like anybody's been taking this seriously so far at all. Everyone needs to acknowledge that women are not safe currently. Nobody seems to really accept that there is an issue. Um, so nothing's been put in place and everyone's turning a blind eye to it. Um, in the meantime, almost every single woman I know is walking around feeling unsafe. I think that once we realise actually how bad this is and it is in a much more open conversation, that more action will be taken because I think, I think now women are just fed up. As women, we constantly have the conversation among ourselves um, and with men, and I think that, you know, it's the constant denial. You know, a lot of men will, will say, really? I don't think that, you know? I, I don't think women really get sexually harassed that much, or that statistic can't be right. It is right, and it is a problem. So it's time to do something. I think one of the first things that needs to change is um, reporting, reporting of crimes. The blame needs to shift from saying, you know, a woman was raped to a man raped a woman. Even the use of language and everything was back to putting the blame on me as if I'd, you know, asked for it. I haven't got myself in those situations. People have put me in those situations. I should be allowed to walk past a school that I go to on my way home from having a doubt with my friends at 15 years old, you know. Guys have to start holding guys accountable. It doesn't matter whether it's your work colleague, whether it's their best friend from school. Whoever it might be, even if it's not our friends, even if it's just someone we see on the street. If someone says something inappropriate, whether it's in a conversation, whether you catcall someone, whether they see someone touch on it, whatever it might be, you have to speak up. Don't be scared to hold people accountable, you know? You don't have to be mean about it either. You can educate people. You can literally teach someone who doesn't know any better Better. Everyone in the community should be doing their part to keep an eye out. Until things change in every kind of area, it's racial issues, it's gender issues, all of these things, until we start changing it in every avenue, I don't think we will get to the real root and see that real change either because they all interlink. Because no matter how many laws you pass, if society doesn't change from the bottom to the top, then the top has no power. You look at the, the police, for example, and the memorial, the vigil for Sarah Everard, and there were women there who were, you know, in pain, suffering, and, you know, everybody was relating to what happened to her and wanting to mourn for her and for women's experiences overall. Like, why have the police allowed mourning for Prince Philip to happen, but yet they wouldn't allow the mourning for Sarah Everard? There's just always a double standard. And even clubs or, like, certain workplaces, like, thinking about your staff, you could do more to make sure that these people are getting home safe so they're not going down these dark alleys by themselves where there's a lot of danger there. And these things need to be taken seriously because maybe if these smaller things were taken seriously, the bigger things wouldn't happen. I think there's a lot of entitlement as well. Even if you accept someone's drink, then all of a sudden what, that gives you a license for whatever's going to happen next. And it's just all these this things, it's just all, it's all a mess really, it's hard, it's hard to say. I have a lot of male friends who are amazing and who have been heroic in my life um, and who are heroes every day. Um, and I know that there are a lot of men out there who are our allies and who are willing to stand up for us um, amongst other men when there's no other women there. The problem is even when we do actually have men that listen to us and respect us and really side with us, the fact that there's actually a society of men that want to then, you know, belittle the men that actually side with us, calling them simps and everything like that. I was raised by a man and um, he's a good man. So um, the, the, the possibility is there, but I just think all the good men need to be made aware that um, all women feel like, you know, there's a lot of bad men out there and we don't feel safe. If we allow men more space to, to be human, to, to have emotions, to have insecurities and to not, you know, to, for us to not create an environment where they now feel like emasculated or they don't feel like they're a man anymore, like I think even, even women can, can encourage the stereotype that 
a man has to always have everything figured out and always has to be strong and the protector and can't show weakness and all these things. But all that does is create this environment where the man is, is shutting off his, his sense of sensitivity and vulnerability. And if men are taught to shut that part off, then they're going to shut that off in, in, in their relationships with other people. And so they're going to be much more likely to dehumanize someone. Well, I think now that there's a lot of focus around men's mental health, which is amazing. People like guys are talking more now about, you know, everything that they weren't, they were told not to talk about before. So hopefully, um, with the conversation coming about, I do feel hopeful that within the next, even 10, 10 years, I would say, we should feel a lot safer. I think it could happen any minute. This conversation in itself is just a massive step. Changes happen, the momentum's kicking in, and, and I feel, I do feel hopeful. I'm really depressed to say that I'm really not hopeful at all. There's way too much money in the wrong hands right now for me to think that I will see the change in my lifetime. But we gotta try. <laughs> it was not your fault. It's not your fault. It is not your fault. It was never your fault. It's not anything that you have done. No means no. If you don't want to do that, you don't do that. And you can change your mind at any point and it's okay. You have nothing to like worry about or feel embarrassed about because at the end of the day this is your body you can take that power back know your power know your worth use it as you force use it harder use it to just express your heart and who you are and embrace who you are speak to someone if it's not someone close to you someone professional if we don't speak up if we don't gain together no one gonna change start from now I promise you that you're not alone. You are 100,000% not alone. It's happened to more women than you think. Unfortunately, many, many women have experienced things similar. Um, but in that, there is strength because we understand. And the things that happen to you and may have happened to you do not define you. What happens to you is never, ever, ever a reflection of who you are and how beautiful you are, how incredible you are, how valuable you are. Someone else's inability to see your worth or to have respect for you in no way, in no way whatsoever diminishes anything within you. You are amazing. Um, you're divine. You're not alone. We do hear you. You are so valid. You are important and you are valued. I promise change is coming and there's so much power in your voice. So always speak up. Your voice matters. And even if you might not have got the correct response from authority figures who should have been there to like lift you up when you're at your lowest and stuff, it wasn't your fault and it's okay to talk about it when you're ready. Don't be afraid to tell people to share a problem. I mean, it sounds cheesy, but a problem shared really does make you feel a lot better. You shouldn't feel embarrassed. You shouldn't feel ashamed. If anything, sharing will make that person culpable and it will bring them to justice by telling other people what's happened and it will stop it happening to anybody else. And that is your duty to ensure that if something happens to you, tell other people because you don't want it to get worse with somebody else. Don't be afraid to um, take care of yourself in whatever way that needs to be. If there's certain people that you don't want to be around, don't force yourself into situations where you feel uncomfortable until you're ready. And it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to write things down and it's okay to screen things out. And it's okay to speak to other women about your experiences. Because you deserve to heal. You don't deserve to suffer from someone else's um, trauma and bad behavior and immoral what what they have done like you don't deserve to suffer from that try and like find a community around you of people that you do feel comfortable with so then when you do go back to that place that something may have happened or you're in um areas where there's a lot of people that you feel safe with the people around you and feel comfortable to be there there will be people out there that will understand you and will be able and willing to be your family to protect you and to give you the time and space to heal and find your strength and find your truth. These people are out there. So when you're ready, speak up.
and we will find you. And also, I have something I want to say to who have ever done this to women that I see with my own eye that karma is a bitch. <laughs>